One thing is you want to make sure that the person is lying straight on the table. And so I feel like Amanda might be a little bit perplexed. So I'm going to have you bend up your feet. Now lift up your rear end. And now come back down and straighten out your feet for me. That will generally straighten someone up on the table. Okay, so I'm going to come in and I'm palpating here and I'm palpating for iliac crest. Okay, now if I do have her straight on the table, her right is higher than her left. I just had an issue with okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's going to be hard for me not to treat you then. Okay, <laughs> so for me, given my hands, if I'm on her iliac crest, my, and she also has quite lovely ASISs, so they pop right out at you. My thumbs just naturally land on them. When we're looking at symmetry, we go to the most inferior aspect and hook under them. Okay, so I palpated here. My thumbs land here, and I naturally go under them so I can look at symmetry. Right? So I'm here, and then I'm here, and you are lower on your higher on your right, okay. So you're probably rotated backwards on this, but we'd have to see which side. Okay, so then, so there are her ASISs. Her AIISs, again, are gonna be inferior and medial, and it's gonna be deeper. So it's easier to find on her right, and there it is on her left. If you're not sure you're on it, have the person bend their leg, now, I want you to try to lift your knee up, but I'm not going to let you, okay? Okay, relax. So I'm looking for firing the rectus femoris to see if I'm on the AIS, A -I -I -S. okay? I'm actually going to have you bend both of your legs up for me. The inguinal ligament, go ahead and just relax a little bit there. Um, the inguinal ligament, you want all the muscles of that area to be relaxed so that the only taut structure in the area is the inguinal ligament. All right. So by having her bend her knees, all of her hip flexors should be relaxed and slack. So then I have her ASIS, an inguinal ligament attaches to that. So then I'm going to go cross fiber, okay, and I'm palpating the inguinal ligament. Now when we get to the hip and right in the middle, and you're just going to let your hands sink. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on, right? Um, I just have the weight of my other hand. And it's a very, very strong pulse. Okay, so I'm just proximal to her umbilicus, right in the middle. Now with one hand, it's almost not quite enough weight. Ha adding the weight of my other hand makes it a little bit easier. Okay, but I'm not pressing any harder than that. Okay, go for feel. So now I'm changing my angle a little bit. I'm going past the skin. And you can feel her linea alba is right there. Now what I'd like you to do is just try to lift your head and shoulders up just a little bit. Good, and come back down. And there's no um, diastasis of the linea alba. Okay. And I think that's it on our list. Have you ever had anyone palpate your psoas before? No. Okay. So this one, I'm at her um, ASIS. I've gone medially. What were you saying, Evan? It hurts so good, hurts right? So, <laughs> so you're going in, but I'm going in slow, okay? And if I feel an increase in pressure from her, she's not going to let me go. So I have to just work slowly to get in. Are you doing okay? Mm -hmm. We're going deeper. <laughs> oh, don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> First, now it would be impossible to not laugh when I do it. So I was about halfway. And now I've made her laugh. So I'm just anterior to the ASIS. I'm staying on the side because I don't want to hit any organs so that one side is up higher than the other. And what I want to do is compare those two sides and see if that's in fact the case because that could be where all your low back pain is coming from. Okay? So what I'm going to do is use the palm of my hand and I'm going to work my way down until I find that bone. And then I'm going to put my thumbs there so I can compare one side to the other. Okay? So I'm going to start up here. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. I do feel that I've hit that mm -hmm. bone. So now I'm going to come in here. And you look pretty good there. Which is so go ahead. Can you use your hand and feel down until you feel that solid ring in the front? There it is. Okay, good. 
but you know I'm comparing. You look nice and lined up. That's great. So those would be the two approaches. Really? That, um, I'm going to try to resist <laughs> doing what I would normally do in this position, which would be palpate the pelvis first, because that's going to be on the next slide. Um, so iliac crest, you're going to come over, and you're going to be at L4, lines up with the iliac crest, the cervical spine. I am going to, good girl. Really, <laughs> seriously, I don't understand why everyone's so far away. I bathe daily. <laughs> so, yes, I, I think you all should be up this close. I, I've never understood why you guys have been so far away. So I'm there. So now I find the next one up, which is going to be three, two, one. Then we're going to be at T12. T12 is really important because that's the transition with rotation. Okay, so your arms are rotating, your upper body is rotating one way, and your pelvis is rotating the other way as you step. And so T12 is a common place that's implicated. And then we're going to keep going up. Okay, but notice I'm always, now it might be different fingers, but I'm always leaving a finger on a, a previous segment so that I know where I am. Okay, and I can work myself all the way up. Now we talked about the transverse processes are equal to the spinous processes in the cervical spine, right? In the lumbar spine, that's true as well. In the lumbar spine, they're going to be much wider. So if you remember looking at the vertebral segments, here we were, we were putting our fingers here to palpate transverse processes, right? So pretty close together. When we're down here, we do own paper. I currently don't. <laughs> <laughs> the life of a graduate student. So when I palpate out here, look how much wider I am. Okay, and I'm on I'm on his teeth or his teeth, his L four. Now you are not gonna feel the spinous processes of L five because they're gonna be tucked under the um, iliac crest. Okay, under the ilium. So in the lumbar spine, they again are going to line up with the spinous process. So if you find a spinous process, you're going to come out and you're going to palpate the transverse processes. This is really important because for manual therapy, if you're looking to see if a facet has been stuck or unstuck, you're going to be on the transverse processes because uh, you're, it's going to be more accentuated if you have any symmetry there. So what you're looking for is, is one thumb more posterior than the other, okay? And then you also want to see if that gets better or worse in flexion or extension. So when they're in prone and you're palpating these, you would actually have that person go into prone on elbows and see if it got better or worse if you had an asymmetry, okay? So the all spinous process is a half a segment lower than the transverse processes, okay? Now from T3, to T10, it's going to be a full step lower. So the spinous process of T3 lines up with the transverse processes of T4. Right? Is everyone following me? The yeah. process. So the spinous process is oh. going to hang far lower than the transverse processes of that segment. So if I were on, looks like I'm T5, I would guess. The transverse of the, if I'm on the transverse processes of T5, the spinous process that's right there is actually the spinous process of T4. Okay. So some landmarks is the spine of the scapula is going to come over and line up with the transverse processes of T4 and the spinous process of T3 in general. The um, inferior angle is going to line up with the transverse processes of T8 and the spinous process of T7. Okay, those just give you some landmarks for that area. Can you say that one more time? Yep. So for T1 and T2 and T11 and T12, the spinous process is going to be a half segment lower than the transverse processes. From T3 to T10, the spinous process for that segment is going to be one full level lower relative to the transverse processes. So a couple of common landmarks are the spine of the scapula are going to come in and line up with the spinous process of T3 and the transverse processes of T4. Another landmark is going to be the inferior angle of the scapula 
that's going to get us the transverse processes of T8 and the spinous process of T7. Now that's a rule of thumb. Everyone's scapulas are different sizes. Having his arms up versus down is going to move us to the true ribs. Um, the last connected rib is going to be um, rib 9 or 10, sorry. Now, when you're palpating ribs 11 and 12, 12 is this long, okay? 12 is super, super short. 11 is going to come around the side. So what you're going to do, Justin, I'm so glad you're not super ticklish. Um, you're gonna come to the side and you're gonna feel for the bottom of the rib cage. And now I'm gonna grab, my fingernails are a little bit long, so I'm, not, I'm trying to not dig in. Trying to find, it's right there on that side, it's there. So I'm on his 11, and so I'm right on the tips of them, okay? That's not super comfortable, so don't get too excited and go, oh, I found it, and keep pressing, because it just really kind of stinks. For 12, it's going to be short. It's going to be in here. And so once you've found 11, now here you're palpating through the thoracolumbar fascia, right? You're palpating through the paraspinals. You're palpating through the lat. So you need to have your fingers pretty vertical, and you're looking for that tip. Right? Again, it's not going to be super comfortable, right? And I wouldn't be able to do that on this side because I need to be over here and pull medially, okay? All right, so I think that that's all of our rib stuff. Again, I'm getting on her iliac crests, which are here. I'm looking at that. I'm coming on to her um, ASISs, and I'm, thank you. So we're on iliac crests. I come down, my thumbs are here. Okay, um, so I go, I, I, just like with the ASIS, I come underneath so that I know that I'm in the same place on both sides so I can look for symmetry. We talked about it's very hard to palpate these transverse processes of L5. Do you see why that would, it's, it's hidden on behind there. Um, so what we're going to do here is the sacral base is going to be just medial to the PSISs. I'll show you Liz when you get up. Okay. Um, the angle of the sacrum is going to be this part right here, okay, where it bends in. The reason that is important is when you get to spine class, what you're going to be doing is looking at the relative position of the sacral angle and the sacral base. Our sacrum moves on an uh, oblique axis, okay, and so if you're moving on this axis, this might be anterior and this might be, I'm sorry, this might be posterior and this might be anterior or the other way around, but these might be relatively stable or if you're moving on this axis, they would be the opposite. So that's why these four landmarks. So we've got sacral base, sacral angle. Now we're gonna follow the, the sacrum down to the coccyx, okay? Um, some of us have joked about, uh, the coccyx is actually really important that we be able to treat because um, if it is sprained or off to the side, it can be very, very painful. So we need to be able to at least assess it. If someone's fractured their coccyx, they're not coming to PT. They're just going to be sitting on a donut for a while. Um, but if it is displaced and not fractured, those people are going to be coming to physical therapy. Okay? So... Iliac crest, PSISs, go medial. I'm on the sacral base. I'm going to follow. Now my hands are going wider again. I'm palpating and I'm palpating the, now the sacral angle. Okay. And on Liz, it's a little bit posterior on her left compared to her right. I'm going to follow that down so that I can palpate her coccyx. Okay. And her coccyx is 